Well, as you've heard, the allegations that the Prime Minister's office improperly pressured former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould to intervene in the prosecution of SNC-Levelin continued to dominate political discussion in Ottawa this week. Central to the debate are demands that Wilson-Raybould be allowed to testify again after her almost five-hour appearance before the Justice Committee almost a month ago. Now, the Liberal majority on the Justice Committee has decided to hear no more testimony, but Wilson-Raybould says she has more to say. And that argument was supported this week by former Minister Jane Philpott, who gave her first interview since she resigned in protest over the Prime Minister's treatment of Wilson-Raybould. Well, so what are the legal options and what are the other possible venues for Jody Wilson-Raybould? Much of that answer depends on parliamentary law and procedures. Gary O'Brien is a former clerk of the Senate and clerk of the parliaments, and he joins me now in the studio to look at this. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Mark. Let's start with, um, if we start with what well, lots been discussed, if... I mean, we'll get to committees, but I mean, a lot of the speculation is that Jody Wilson-Raybould is not going to have another chance to come before a committee. So let's just ask one simple question. In terms of parliamentary privilege, standing in the House uh, or in committee, does parliamentary privilege allow her to speak freely? In my opinion, this is the whole purpose of parliamentary privilege, is to be able to express whatever you want uh, to, to the House of Commons and not be afraid of restrictions of solicitor client or things of that nature. And uh, it is perfectly proper for her to, to, uh, to speak what's on her mind. Before committee as well? Because I mean, obviously she was, you know, she was concerned about limitations even in her appearance before Absolutely. committee. Absolutely. But you're saying parliamentary privilege theoretically ex ex trumps all. Extends to committees. And uh, of course, uh, as being the former clerk of the Senate, and I was the clerk of the Pearson Airport Committee at that time in the uh, mid-1990s. Uh, we were investigating the uh, con cancellation of the contracts for, for uh, the privatization of the Pearson Airport. And uh, the Justice Minister and his Deputy Minister were claiming that uh, the officials of the Justice Department could not come before the committee because of solicitor-client privilege and uh, cabinet solidarity. Uh, cabinet conferences mm -hmm. and of course this the committee did not agree with that and uh, they called the witness because because the committees parliamentary committees have full power mm -hmm. to ask any question of a witness and the witness must ask parliament is the grand inquest of the nation this was always its traditional role and uh, I think what we're having in this controversy is a return from executive-centered parliament to parliament-centered parliaments mm -hmm. and allowing parliament to do its job. Was, um, if Jody Wilson-Raybould, when she appeared for the first four and a half hours that she did, uh, she was very mindful of the waiver that she'd been given, and she said it, it prevented her from saying a whole host of things, and it was limited in time and limited in function, what she could comment on. But you're, why do you think she opted for the more cautious approach? Well, uh, she uh, obviously was taking legal advice, which is fine, uh, and uh, given the dynamics of that committee, uh, probably uh, she was correct in doing it, but uh, the, uh, the onus is on the members themselves and what rights they have to ask a witness questions. And I think we should re remember that. We should always keep that in mind. What the parliamentary authorities say about the obligation of witnesses to answer any question in mm. committee. Is she maybe more conservative in her appraisal because she's a lawyer? There would be a risk of disbarment it, it or something, could be. debarment? It very well could be, and uh, she, I don't know what advice she was given, but uh, mm -hmm. obviously she wanted to follow that. If she doesn't get a chance uh, and is not invited, because there, there will be a vote by the Ethics Committee next Tuesday, if she's not invited to go before that committee, she's not going back before the Justice Committee, if she, avails herself, if she were to avail herself of a chance to stand in the House of Commons, where could she do that? Would that be a point of privilege? Well, this is uh, difficult. Um, as I said uh, in your answer to your question, she has the perfect right to speak freely in the House, but under what venue? Mm. Uh, a question of privilege, uh, I know there's one on the floor, but is herself, is she asking for a speaker's ruling, whether her own privileges were violated? I, I don't think that is the question. Mm -hmm. I think she's more interested in the substance of her remarks and in Parliament, you have to speak to something, either a bill or a motion. Yeah. Uh, I know you have a, a, a member, member statements, but whether they're adequate to fully explain mm -hmm. uh, her situation, 
Uh, I don't think so. There's a time limit too, isn't there? It's what, yes. almost 15 minutes is yeah. about the maximum you yes. can speak. Yeah. Uh, to, um, um, we did see on Friday, today, we saw uh, Conservative MPs reviving, uh, you mentioned it was before Parliament, reviving a point of privilege that was brought up last week or earlier in the week, I believe by the NDP, talking about the, the, the Global Mail article, talking yes. about the Prime Minister's comments, talking about her position. So she could ask to be involved in that. She certainly could, but again, that is narrowing on the question of parliamentary privilege and whether the privileges were breached and whether they want a speaker's ruling. I don't think that's the issue. I don't think that's her issue. Um, and uh, I think other parliament should consider returning again to its core function, which is being the grand inquest of the nation, not necessarily writing reports, but at least finding the facts of issues. Mm -hmm. This has been a long tradition, and uh, I think these crises are good. Uh, the pipeline debate was, was good to return Parliament to what, it, what's, what its original function is for. You talk about the legislative versus the executive. Any thoughts then on why the Prime Minister, I mean, we've seen him already in quite a precedent, wave two types of privilege, cabinet confidentiality and client uh, attorney-client privilege, to a certain extent with regards to Madam uh, Wilson-Raybould. Any thoughts, would he be well advised? Is, is there any major down, downside to uh, waiving it completely? I don't know what advice he's been given. Obviously, he's a careful man, and he may have other reasons for not wanting to, uh, to waive it. Uh, but as I said, I, in my mind, I'm not sure if, it, if the discussion takes place in a parliamentary committee, that has any impact because parliament, parliamentarians have the right yeah. to ask what questions they want. But of course she has to be invited before a committee. Oh, absolutely. And it, it all depends, again, on the dynamics of the committee. I'm just talking more about the broad yeah. theoretical powers of parliament. Well, thank you very much for coming in and sharing your thoughts. We will watch this with great interest. Obviously, it raises a lot of issues. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. My pleasure.